Hello friends and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. In this tutorial, we are going to cover cycle detection in a directed graph. So, the problem statement is that we are given a directed graph and we have to check whether it contains a cycle or not. We need to just print true if there are one or more cycle or a false if there are none. Let's break down the problem statement further and understand what do we mean by few keyword used here. First, it says that the graph is a directed one. So, what is a directed graph? Here we see a directed and an undirected graph. Note how the edge of a directed graph is having a direction from one node to another while the edge of an undirected graph is directionless. Next term we used was a cycle. So what do we mean by a cycle in our graph? Cycle is basically a closed path where we have a sequence of nodes starting and ending on the same node. Here we have an acyclic and a cyclic graph. In cyclic graph, we have a cycle as if we start from zero, we come back to it after going through node one and two. However, in this acyclic graph, if we start from zero, it goes to one, then two, and then there is no path that lead back to the node zero. That is, in this graph, we do not have a cycle. Let's now look at the solution to the problem statement. The cycle detection can be done using depth first search technique. If you are not aware of it, you can go through the tutorial that we have covered earlier. Also, we will see the algorithm with the help of this cyclic graph. The algorithm is a modified DFS such that we are required to check the existence of any back edge. Now, back edge is an edge that is from a node to itself or from a node to its ancestor. Notice this edge is a back edge as it forms a self loop and this edge is a back edge as it leads back to its ancestor node. Now, to detect a back edge, we can keep track of vertices that are currently in our recursion stack of DFS traversal. If somehow we reach a vertex that is already in the recursion stack, then we say there is a cycle in the graph. Let's quickly do a depth first search on this graph. We use a stack to store the nodes currently in our recursion. Also notice the color representation of visited and unvisited nodes. We start from node 0. Since it is not visited, we visit it and also put it into our recursion stack. Next, we see the adjacent nodes of 0. 1 and 2 are the adjacent node. We choose the numerically lesser and go with node 1. Since 1 is not visited, we visit it and also push it into our recursion stack. Next, we see the nodes adjacent to 1. Only node 2 is there. We therefore visit it and also push it into our recursion stack. Now we see nodes adjacent to node 2. Node 0 and 3 are such nodes. We choose node 0. Now here we find that node 0 is already visited. Since it is already visited, we check 
if it is also in our recursion stack here it is part of our recursion stack now this is the condition of the presence of a cycle and therefore we can stop and say that our graph has a cycle the algorithm stops at this package as it leads to its ancestor node let's see the implementation of this modified dfs this is the code for it and it is taken from geeks for geeks here we create two boolean arrays to mark node visited and part of our recursion stack initially we mark all node as unvisited and not part of our recursion stack we then send the starting node and the arrays to our cycle detecting dfs function this loop helps in case of a disconnected graph now this function go depth wise and mark nodes visited and part of recursion stack for each node we check its adjacent nodes if they are not visited we make a recursive call else if they are already visited it checks if it is in our recursion stack if it is a part of recursion stack it returns true that is we have found a cycle if no such cycle found it returns false now let's look at the complexity of this code the code will run in big o of b plus e this is the same as we have in depth first search here b are the number of vertices and e are the number of edges with this we come to an end of this tutorial if you have any doubts or suggestion please leave them in the comment section below thanks for watching